whether you're in hot, sticky weather, oh, oh really hot day, Bro. or cold Arctic conditions, wool and down are staples of every experienced backpacker and camper. Which one is better? Stay tuned and find out. Hey everybody, Jeremy with Midwest Backpacker. My friends out on the trail call me almost. I do a lot of backpacking, camping, outdoor adventure type videos. Occasionally I talk about gear. So wool and down are both great, but they have different types of applications. Which one is better? Let's start out by talking about down. Now down is an incredibly light insulator that can really be compacted. But not all down is created equally. Down comes in what they call as a fill power, uh, starting down at 450 and the fill power can go up to over 1200 nowadays. Now, the higher that fill power, the lofty the down is itself. So loft is what gives you that insulating power and what keeps you warm. Now the cheaper down, down in that 450 range is usually made from ducks and the higher fill power up in that 1200 range uh, comes from geese. Now loft is, like I said, what keeps you warm. So typically in a quilt or a sleeping bag, they have baffles and a two inch baffle is rated for 30 degrees. And if you go up to a four inch baffle, it's usually around zero degrees Fahrenheit. While down is great, it isn't perfect and has some imperfections. The first is down, if it gets wet, you lose all insulating power. So if you're gonna be camping someplace and your down sleeping bag gets wet, uh, you might be screwed. Now, if you have a down puffy on, you need to wear a really good raincoat or shell over the top to keep it wet. And you don't wanna be too hot because you don't wanna get sweaty and your down will get wet that way. Now they are making improvements to down where some is so-called waterproof, but they aren't there yet. Quality down can be super expensive. Now you can go out to Sam's Club or Costco and buy a decent puffy for about $50. But if you want to buy a high quality down cold weather quilt, it's going to run you over 500 bucks. Down can be super fragile or as Ralphie's dad says, fragile. Now, I wouldn't recommend walking through the woods with it through brush because they have a lighter shell and it'll probably get ripped or torn on something. And if you sit around the campfire, there are rogue sparks everywhere. One of those sparks hit your coat and you're going to have a hole in it. Now, my down coat I do wear around the campfire and it has all sorts of holes around it uh, that have been patched. I kind of take that as a badge of honor and call it trail patina. Now, that coat that I do wear around the fire, I can't wear when I'm out on the street in public or else people are gonna think that I'm a chain smoker. The last negative I wanna mention about down is where it comes from. A lot of down is actually plucked off of live ducks and live geese. It's pretty horrific, right? If you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen, check with the manufacturer of your quilt or your puffy coat to make sure that that down was sourced ethically. Wool is another amazing natural insulator. But like down, not all wool is created equally. You probably have that thick, itchy wool sweater. But nowadays, they're making wool out of a new material. It's called merino wool. Merino wool is made from a merino sheep. <coughs> now, merino wool is very popular with backpackers. You've probably heard of brands like Smart Wool, Minus 33, and Darn Tough Socks. They are the gold standards for base layers for through hikers. And the reason for that is merino wool not only will keep you warm when it's cold, it will keep you cool when it's hot. So most of the time when you're out backpacking and working out on the trail and the sun's coming down, it's going to be warm out. And merino wool is cooler than polyester as a base layer. And not only is it cooler, it's antimicrobial. 
which means that you will stink less if you wear smart wool. So after two or three days out on the trail, you can get pretty smelly. Do all your friends and that shuttle driver a favor and buy a smart wool t-shirt and smart wool underwear so you aren't so funky. Beyond the funky factor, smart wool also will insulate you when it's wet. So if it's cold out and it's raining out, it's getting cooler, that smart wool t-shirt, as thin as it is, is going to keep you a little bit warmer than if you were wet in that polyester shirt. So the drawback of smart wool is the cost. So I have a smart wool t-shirt like this that comes in at about 50 bucks. And I have several pairs of darn tough socks uh, and they are probably usually over $20. So smart wool is not cheap. Thick, heavy, traditional wool probably doesn't have a use by the modern day ultra lightweight backpacker, but it is a staple when you're out in the cold, deep winter. Now, traditional hikers are looking for clothing that is durable, warm, and weather resistant. Now, thick quality wool shirts, uh, pants, and blankets can literally last for generations. And don't be afraid of that rogue spark burning a hole in it. I really like my wool boreal shirt from Lester River Bushcraft and my Kodet wool bibs. So I bought these bibs off of eBay for about $100. If you're going to buy wool items like this, you want to make sure at a minimum it's 24 ounces, uh, even better up to 28 ounces. Now, while these are super warm, each one of them weighs nearly three pounds a piece, so they aren't ultra lightweight. So no matter if you are in the Arctic cold weather type conditions that I would wear those in, or if you're backpacking in the summer when it's a little bit warmer, you definitely need to layer uh, your clothing so you can maintain a proper uh, body temperature. So let's look at how I layer. Let's start off in the summer. So uh, this is a smart wool t-shirt and running shorts that I uh, wear to stay cool. Nice legs, huh? Uh, I throw on some smart wool socks that are cool and dry quickly. Uh, I throw a smart wool buff on my head. It uh, cools me down sometimes and it protects from the sun and it makes a nice sweat rag. Um, uh, if it cools down, I throw on this uh, quarter zip that's made out of merino wool. Uh, helps me keep a little warm uh, while I'm hiking if, if it gets a little cooler. And once I camp and not hiking, things may cool down a bit. I throw on my 850 down hooded uh, jacket and throw on some merino wool uh, long underwear or leggings. Uh, if it gets even colder... Uh, what I do is I pull up my hood and I pull the buff down over my face and neck and I put on some wool wristies that I made out of wool socks. In the winter when camping or trekking across lakes in sub-zero arctic type conditions it's even more important to layer because ironically sweating is what gets you cold. So this is how I layer my clothing. I start off with some smart wool underwear and heavier merino wool base layer. Dude needs to put some pants on. I add some thick wool socks. I add a warm wool mid layer. I add some thick uh, coated wool bibs. Thanks for putting pants on, dude. Uh, and they are over some fleece lined pants. I put on my Steger Arctic Mucklucks. Uh, I add my merino buff uh, around my neck, which adds warmth down here. Uh, I throw on my 850 down hooded jacket, uh, which is often the, the uh, top layer while I'm active and walking. When relaxing around camp, uh, I'll throw on my Lester River Boreal uh, shirt over the top. On my head, I add a mid-layer uh, minus 33 smart wool balaclava. It's not a baklava, it's a balaclava. 
Um, and then I add my wool cap that I'm wearing right now for minus 33 over the top. Um, add some wool mittens and I have a cover that I put over the top of them that makes it uh, water resistant. And uh, when it's really cold, I'll pull up both the down hoodie and the wool ho hoodie from my Boreal shirt. So that is when it's really cold will keep me warm. You've probably noticed that I wear a lot more wool items than down items when I am backpacking. But where down really catches up is I rely on down to stay warm when I'm sleepy. So I sleep in a hammock and I am confident that uh, around my hammock and under my rain fly that my uh, down will stay dry. I have no worries about that. So it's very important for me when I am out backpacking during the day and I may, may get cold and wet when I'm backpacking that I have a warm, comfortable spot uh, to lay at night and to warm up even if I'm cold during the day. So I probably have eight or ten different quilts that I've bought over time. So this is a Costco down quilt, uh, do-it-yourself, uh, that, you know, it's super thin. And it'll probably keep me warm uh, down to about 40 degrees. And then on the other end of the spectrum, here I have a minus 20 degree Fahrenheit uh, under quilt from Local Libre with uh, super thick baffles that I don't know are six, eight inches thick. But just having that confidence that even if I'm cold and miserable on the trail, I can set up my tarp in my hammock and get in that warm down quilt uh, really makes uh, me more confident in uh, my backpacking. So both wool and down can be super expensive. You're not going to buy all of these items overnight. I have bought them over time. Uh, buy them as you can and, and you'll build up uh, kind of your arsenal for keeping warm out on the trail. As I mentioned earlier, I do a lot of backpacking camping and outdoor adventure type videos. Occasionally I'll talk gear with the best of the nerds, but if you like those type of videos, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit that bell notification. They'll tell you when I put out new videos. Check me out on Instagram, check me out on Facebook. Once I get up to 3000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away 50 Midwest Backpacker stickers. So hit that subscribe button. If you want a sticker now, check out my Teespring store where I sell t-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers, all sorts of crap that helps support this channel. So check that out. But other than that, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back out on the trail. So you can adjust your body temperature, maintain your body temperature. If down gets wet, it loses all completely. If that down gets wet, down items when I'm back at that back or sitting by the campfire, this is wordy, and I'm gonna start over. Of your puffy, puffy. You wanna find out that the do do ya. Ma bleed. Antimicrobial. 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 It's micro antimicrobial. I can do this. And Mike, the fart. Fart is anti and I I play through Done. Whoop whoop.